the star. And this is the situation in South Sudan right now. The decorated generals, I want my panelists to just chime in a bit on this as well. What do you think about the situation? Uh, maybe you can comment on the, the editorial cartoons as well. Let's begin with you, uh, George. The situation in... I mean, Southern Sudan is a problem to the region. Yes. And remember, this is the latest uh, country uh, that seceded from uh, the larger Sudan. And Kenya played a very major role in making sure that uh, the South Sudanese have their independence. But as things are happening right now, uh, matters have gone tribal. And you'll find that we have two uh, generals who are fighting each other and forgetting that we are, they have people that are under them, people that are being displaced, people that are now becoming refugees. Because it's quite just recently when we had uh, uh, people from uh, the refugee camp in Kakuma being moved back to their country. And as the situation is right now, it's getting out of hand. Mm -hmm. We are still having an influx of refugees from southern Sudan getting into Kenya. Yes. And this is going to strain Kenya economically. And if you look at the situation in southern Sudan, I don't believe the solution is uh, military intervention. We have, the, we have UNIMIS there. Mm -hmm. It has been there for quite some time. What have they achieved? Remember, our own Ondieki was kicked out from southern Sudan uh, on claims that he was not able to protect civilians when they were being attacked by the rebels. Yes. And if you look at the situation, we are not far away from what actually happened. And uh, every other day, we are getting stories from southern Sudan that uh, people are being killed villages are being banned. And at the end of the day, the IGAD group has not come out clearly with strong terms telling Southern Sudan that you people sit, need to sit down and talk. We've been having talk shows, they come here, we sit together, and at the end of the day we're not having any results. People are suffi suffering. The UN has also come up and talked about genocide, the genocide that's happening in Southern Sudan. Yes. But what action have they taken? Remember, they were in Rwanda when the Tutsis were killed by the Hutus. Mm -hmm. They did nothing. They only came out to apologize later when already more than a million people had been killed. Mm -hmm. Are we witnessing the same scenario in southern Sudan, where we have a world that is not ready to take decisive action to deal with the menace that is the generals in southern Sudan? Because yeah. we can talk about sovereignty, but at the end of the day, you will find that you will talk about southern Sudan being a, a, an independent country, but these people are not able to manage themselves. They're not able to manage their own affairs. Right. I think we need to see more action from the UN, we need to so see more action from the regional uh, uh, countries, IGAD, uh, in this situation in well, southern Sudan. All right, looking at uh, the generals, they are well decorated, Dr. Farah, right? These are the, the, the star generals with so many stars, uh, which is not really a star, but if you look keenly, these are actually uh, miniature coffins, right? And of course, you can see the blood splashed everywhere there. The situation is dire. The also the, the Japanese have pulled out their troops from uh, South Sudan as well. So where are we headed to, Dr. Farah? It's, it's really sad. <coughs> uh, looking at it from a conflict management perspective, I think the problem in South Sudan is being looked at it as a dispute as opposed to a conflict. And therefore it's being tried to have it settled rather than managed or resolved or, or transformed. Uh, trying to look for the better uh, uh, word. In this case, uh, either uh, various discussions inside the country or, or the Addis uh, uh, talks and any other bilateral or multilateral shuttle or secretive diplomacy that is uh, ongoing as we speak, what we need to do is push them to look at the primary sources of their conflict as opposed to the secondary. And in this case, rather than looking at the institutional and constitutional aspects of the South Sudanese conflict, what they need to do is look at the psychological and perceptual aspects. And, and before they resolve that, I don't think there is, there is any way out. Um, sometimes, uh, as, an, as, as a pan-Africanist, you tend to think whether they really need to uh, continue fighting or they just go back to Khartoum. Mm -hmm. They cannot manage for themselves. So is there, is there any profiteering on this as well? Because it seems they want to keep on with the war because people also uh, they're benefiting from this. They're gaming the system, uh, so to speak. Come to I, I, I think um, I want to look at it uh, broadly. One, yes, they've created what we call a war economy. So people are benefiting. Uh, and some of economy. them uh, from within, from outside, from the region. The gun runners all over this region who are doing this. But I think let's, and let's look at South Sudan from a regional mm. perspective. Yes. One, we have countries 
that have developed or are extending their national interests into the conflicts of South Sudan. Mm -hmm. And, and we have some hegemonic tendencies around this region uh, from the countries like Uganda, uh, Ethiopia is developing one. They want to imagine that the biggest power around here. Kenya is slowly losing its grip on South Sudan even after investing so much in South Sudan. And people have seen this, countries have seen this. Uh, and that to me, for as long as we pretend to be looking for solutions in South Sudan, but in the process trying to extend our national interests uh, to ensure that we capture what will emerge out of South Sudan, that makes it very difficult for us to be honest as a region to deal with this. Number two, and I said this before, this so-called peace pact that was signed in Addis Ababa was forced on the Sudanese leaders. Mm -hmm. And from a conflict perspective, Dr. Farah, you, you know very well, you can never force peace on a nation. And, and we say that for as long as Riek Machar and Salva Kiir were forced to sign this pact, it will never work for South Sudan. So what we are seeing is a region pretending or trying to bring peace in South Sudan, yet they have their own national interests, mm -hmm. and at the same time trying to force people on a pact that they are not generally in acceptance, all of them. And therefore, we shall continue having these problems. We, we know uh, UN peacekeepers have never restored peace anywhere, except East Timor. And because it's a small country, give me any country in this world where a UN peace has actually restored peace. Yugoslavia? Never. When we had Never. also our Kenyan troops going to Yugoslavia? The US went in, mm -hmm. they bombed uh, Serbia, that's when we attained peace. It was a unilateral decision by the US when they sent in the tomahawks to pulp Serbia, that's when we had peace. But nowhere in the world, and I can tell you this, we have 16,000 troops in Congo. We still have militias in Eastern Congo as we speak. So therefore my take, and I'll, I'll advise those who want to listen, let the people of South Sudan be led to come up with a pact that they believe in themselves. Then after they have accepted, then it will be easy for this region to claim that we have peace in South Sudan. As I finish, because we know the dynamics of South Sudan. Mm -hmm. Salva Kiir is uh, a captive of the so-called Dinka Council of Elders. Mm -hmm. There are 15 of them, led by the current army commander. For as long as you do not extricate Salva Kiir from this so-called Council of Elders, and with the region understands is a problem, then we shall continue having problems in South Sudan. That's my view on South Sudan. All right, thank you. Let's hear from Prof. Then we'll come to you briefly, Dr. Farah. I, I really uh, like uh, uh, Captain Weronga's analysis. It's, yes. It is right on. Um, the issue, uh, Dubai, I have a group of Sudanese on my campus mm -hmm. right now doing training. Mm -hmm. I had a, a very lively discussion yesterday with this group. South Sudan had the opportunity to be different from the, the rest of Africa. We, from 1957, Ghana independent, yes. to where we are right now, we have gone through up and down. We have made mistakes, ethnic conflict, uh, uh, you know, uh, grabbing, corruption, and everything. Everything yeah. has happened in, in Africa. Yeah. Unfortunately, at the time of the so-called independent, South Sudan didn't have Nelson Mandela. Uh, they have uh, folks who have been fighting in the... In, in the forest for many years, yes. coming in. And then what Captain Werunga just talked about is this called Council of Elders. You know, this group of primitive people <laughs> who want to take us back to the Stone Age and to talk about the kind of things we cannot be talking about now when we're talking about digital revolution. They have no relevancy to the current and, and the direction the country is taking. So forget Council of Elder. This is an African problem. This is Southern Sudanese problem. And we cannot look at Japan to come here and solve it, or the US to send Tomahawk, uh, you know, uh, 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 to, to fight in South Sudan. If we cannot fight it, let's just give up. And um, nobody is interested. Uh, you know, the Northern uh, uh, Sudan will say, okay, we told you so. 
These people are not ready for independence. There's arms, you know, uh, taking, coming in like rain in that southern Sudan. These people have fought for years. They have not learned to settle. Let's look at what Captain talk about in the case of, in the case of, uh, of, uh, of Uganda. Settle the people, get to the root cause, why they need to be there. Take why do you exist? Forget right. the Council of Elders. Right. Lastly, let's hear from Dr. Farrell. Building on what Prof just said, uh, African solutions to African problems. I would like to, to propose what I call the concept of Makumism. Professor Makumi Magiro, I think he's at Kwea now, formerly at the University of Nairobi, who pushes African countries to look outside from inside. Mm -hmm. And in this case, for Southern Sudanese uh, uh, leaders mm -hmm. to look at what they want um, and not look at what others want them to do. Forget about Chinese oil interests mm -hmm. versus the U.S. also uh, um, hiding behind uh, human rights uh, card. Forget about uh, a divided Africa, a divided IGAD along very mere personal level uh, interests, etc., etc. But push for what the Southern Sudanese people uh, want uh, and, and where they would want to be uh, in the next uh, decade and where their generation would want to be. All right. All right. Thank you.